We long to be clothed from above, this passage says. And what we are clothed in from above is the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, if we know Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. Really, this body, according to this passage, and according to everything I've observed so far, will perish. Will perish. We're all going to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But nobody gets out of this life alive unless Jesus comes back first. Amen? Yes. This body is meant to be temporary. It's meant to be temporary. Isn't it something to look forward to, to be clothed with a new body that is meant to be permanent? Uh, our new identity uh, in this passage is compared to a house. We know of the earthly tent which is our house is torn down. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That passage says our new body is designed to last. Our new body is designed to be more comfortable than our old body. Our new body is designed to be warmer than our old body. Uh, our new body is designed not to leak, ultimately. And Paul says a lot about our new body in 1 Corinthians 15 where he speaks about the resurrection and Jesus coming back again and how we will get a new body at that, at that time. Isn't that, isn't that going to be cool? To get a new body from the Lord. We long to be clothed with that new body because that new body has a bunch of advantages. First of all, it's full of life. Everlasting life. Do you know when you began your new spiritual Life, you know when you your your body itself, the flesh part of it may be old, but you know when your life began brand new is when you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. That's when you entered into eternal life, right? You entered into eternal life when you received Jesus. Right now, you can say, if you know Jesus, that I'm going to live eternally. Amen. Amen. And our body may die along the way someplace, but that's going to be okay. Because God has reserved for me a new body, and not made with hands. A new body that is perfect in every way, that is designed to last in eternity. I, I, when I receive Christ as my Savior, I am full of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm filled with His presence. I won't be found naked because I will be filled and covered with God's presence and God's spirit. I'll be full of hope. If you look at in verses 6 through 8, therefore all, being always of good courage and knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. I, we would, or we are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Isn't that hope? You know, when someone passes away, we don't grieve as others who have no hope. Why? Because we have hope. We know that my father, my mother, my sister, my loved ones, I know where they are today. I know that to, to be absent from the body here, the moment they took their last breath here, they took their first breath in heaven. To be absent from the body, according to Paul here, is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Yes. They didn't have to wait for the funeral. <laughs> you know, the moment they took their last breath here, they were home with the Lord Jesus. Right? Uh, you know, we've been praying for folks that are going through some serious uh, health issues right now. And, uh, and I shared with one of them the other day, you know, the worst thing that could happen is the best thing that could happen, right? If you think about it, the worst thing that could happen is the best thing that could happen. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the moment I take my last breath here, I have that eternal hope that I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus for an eternity. If you don't have that hope, you need to know my Lord. Because you're not full of life until you're full of Jesus. You don't have Jesus until you surrender your life to him.
and receive him as Lord and Savior. So we're full of hope. And, and we're also pleasing to God. We're looking at verses 9 and 10. It says, therefore also we have a, as our am ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. You know, the baddest thing we could do is to reject Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? The recompense for that is an eternal hell. That's what the scripture says. It's not, it's not something God wants for any of us. God is not willing that any should perish, but a, that all should come to repentance. Uh, God's not willing that anyone should face hell. But we can choose to go there if we choose to reject Jesus Christ. If we choose to reject salvation. And that's something we can choose at. We're all going to stand before Jesus someday. Well, our desire until then should be to please God. Our desire after then will be to please God. But our desire until then should be pleasing to God. Is our desire to be pleasing to God? Do you wake up each morning and say, Here I am, Lord, and reporting for duty. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. Whatever you want me to say, I'm going to say. Whatever, however you want me to live today, Lord, that's what I want to live. With your strength, your power, your help, I'm going to live my life for you. That should be our goal in this new body, in this new life, in this new existence we have with Jesus Christ. We are really a new creature, a different animal than we were before. The old things have passed away. The new things replaced the old. The old things have passed away, verse 17. Look, look at that passage, and let's just think about that for a minute. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. An important part of that verse is the old things have passed away. The old things have passed away. I, I think so many times we Christians hang on to the old things. And we ought to let those old things go. Fear has subsided as trust has rushed into our heart. We have nothing to fear, as Winston Churchill said, but fear itself. We have nothing to fear if we are under the influence and control of the God of the universe. Amen? You think about it. What can't God do? <laughs> you know? What, how much does God love us? If he loves us that much and he can do all things, what are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? We have nothing to fear. I, I know fears come. But as our trust in him grows, then the fears subside. Self-absorption has succumbed to love for one another. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says uh, there that he died for all, that they should live no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. If we're living for Jesus, what's his command? We discussed it last week, right? Love one another. Love one another. If we're living for Christ, we ought to follow his command to love one another. And loving one another takes the focus off of us and puts the focus on others. Amen? So that when one of our loved ones goes through a hard time, we're there for them. We rally around them. We love them even if it costs us. Amen? And, and you know, the thing it may cost us the most is our time or our own individual entertainment. <laughs> But we love them enough to be there for them. Uh, and hurts are healed. Wounds are forgiven. Habits are changed. We even look better. Yeah, think about it. If any man be in Christ, we even look better. What do I mean by that? I, I, this is not an anti-aging cream that I'm selling. I have a few bottles left. In the back there. <laughs> a 
But honestly, if you live for the Lord, there's something different about you that people notice. You know, it's, it's the grouchy solderers and the happy solderers <laughs> that we saw earlier <laughs> as an example. You know, it's, Christ makes a difference in your heart. He brings peace and joy into your heart so that when you go through bad circumstances, honestly, you look better than you did before you had Christ because you're going through those circumstances trusting in God. And there's a difference on your face even. Amen? Yes. You even look better. <laughs> so if you want to look better, that's my... That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my anti-aging secret <laughs> that I need to practice more myself. <laughs> but really, honestly, uh, hurts, habits, and hang-ups, those are things uh, that Christ can make a difference in even if we don't think there's any hope. Amen? Christ is the one who can heal the hurts. Christ is the one that can help change the habits. and Christ is the one that can help us get over the hang-ups that we have in our lives. Uh, he's the answer uh, to all those things. Uh, old things have passed away, verse 17 says. And it also goes on to th say, new things have come. I'm really excited about that part. <laughs> I'm excited about new things have come. Uh, it's great to have the old things out of the way. Amen? Uh, let me try that again. It's great to have the old things flush down the toilet. Does that sound better? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. It's great to be rid of all that stinky trash <laughs> of the past. But folks, not only are we rid of that, but new things have come. New things have come. It's not just a cleaning out of the old, but it's a filling with the new that this verse speaks about. Uh, our new attitude Galatians 5, 22 and 23 reflect the uh, fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness. There is another one. I, 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 I forget it all the time. It has something to do with suffering for a long time. I, <laughs> long suffering or patience. <laughs> uh, parts of the fruits of the Spirit. It's a new attitude. We approach life with a new attitude. If you're a Christian, you ought to have a new attitude. You should no longer be the grouchiest person in the room. <laughs> you know? You should be filled with a joy that, that doesn't come from you, a joy that comes from the Lord. Amen? Uh, a new attitude that, that is reflected in your life, in the way that, that you relate to other people. I, and I, I don't mean to make light of this. I, I understand there are times in life when circumstances are really hard. And maybe it's some difficulty we're going through. Uh, maybe it's some trial. Uh, maybe it has something to do with decisions we've made or decisions others have made. That, uh, or maybe it's just living in this sinful world sometimes. And it just gets us down. It just gets us down to the degree that you are able to turn that over to the God to God, that's the degree that God can replace that worry, that difficulty with joy and peace. The more you are able to turn that over to God, and it's a process, it's a growth process, the more that you're able to turn that over to God, the more peace and contentment you can have in your own heart. Amen? Does that make sense? So I know we haven't any of us arrived yet, but we're growing, aren't we? At least we should be trying to grow in that aspect as we turn it over to God. A new attitude, uh, a, a new altitude. I, I love that play, uh, attitude and altitude. I've used it before many sermons <laughs> because I really think there's a real difference in us being over the circumstances or being under the circumstances, right? A new altitude. God replaces us with a new altitude because he helps us to see things as he sees them. And he's never under the circumstances. He's never having to shift his plans in, because of new conditions. Nothing has ever surprised him. He's always ultimately aware of 
and in charge of what happens.